a new two-part adaptation of Frank Herbert's Dune is on its way. In anticipation of its release, I've been exploring the unique characters and elements that make up this epic tale. In this video, I'd like to explore the mysterious and deadly Count Hasimir Fenring, as well as his part in this intricate novel, and whether we can expect to see him in this new adaptation. One of the standout elements from Frank Herbert's Dune is the great number of characters that are featured throughout, and what they each contribute to this unique story. Even those that can be considered minor or supporting characters are still intricately crafted and impart a vital element that serves to expand upon the universe in which the story takes place. Such is the case with Count Hasimir Fenring, close friend, trusted advisor, and agent of the reigning Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV of House Carino. The Count himself has come to be a prominent member within House Fenring, a minor house that has long been associated with House Carino, which has been the seat of the Imperial Throne for the past 10,000 years. Hasimir has been a close companion of Shaddam IV since childhood. Shaddam's daughter, Princess Irulan, observes the Count Hasimir Fenring as her father's only real friend. She describes him as a dapper and ugly little man, but who she also notes is one of the deadliest fighters in the Imperium. The Count has proven to be an essential asset to Shaddam and his interests. He serves as a mentat, political tactician, and assassin. He uses his particular set of skills to aid his friend's rise to power as Emperor. It is even widely suspected among the nobles of the Imperium that it was Count Fenring who assassinated Shaddam's father, Elrut IX, by means of a slow-acting poison delivered in his drink in order to quicken his friend's path to the Golden Lion Throne. The Count continues to show his value and loyalty by ensuring the Emperor's interests are served and his continued rule is assured. As the 81st Padishah Emperor of House Carino, Shaddam has no intention of letting the Empire slip through his fingers. Driven by fear and his lust for power, he then enacts a plan to eliminate a potential rival, Duke Leto of House Atreides, by scheming with their bitter enemy House Harkonnen to ensure the Atreides' downfall. The Count serves as the Emperor's right-hand man in ensuring Shaddam's demands with the Harkonnens are met along with making sure the Emperor's involvement remains hidden. When the story of Dune begins, Fenring is serving as interim governor of Arrakis, as it changes stewardship from House Harkonnen to House Atreides by the Emperor's command. House Atreides assumes the Arakeen Palace residence where the Count and Lady Fenring resided. Once the Atreides take control of the desert planet and its spice harvesting operations, Shaddam then assigns Count Fenring as the temporary governor of Caladan, the Atreides' homeworld. The Count and Shaddam have a close yet complicated relationship. One might suspect that Hasimir would do anything Shaddam asked. He is often referred to as the Emperor's errand boy, after all, so it's easy to make that claim. However, Hasimir is a complex figure and is not afraid on occasion to make decisions and present counsel based on what he thinks is best politically for Shaddam, even if it's contrary to his thinking. At times, this has caused contention between them, however, no one would dare question his loyalty to his friend. However, he is also a man with divided loyalties. He is also devoted to his Bene Gesserit wife, Lady Margot Fenring, an enchantingly beautiful woman who in turn is completely committed to the sisterhood and their plan to one day have direct control over humanity and its future. Through the Bene Gesserit's breeding and genetics program, it is their ultimate goal to produce a super being, the first male Bene Gesserit able to bridge space and time, one who would not only be able to access both male and female ancestral memories, being able to see clearly into the past, but could also precisely predict the future. The abilities of a Bene Gesserit Reverend Mother, Mentat, and Guild Navigator all in one. The Kwisatz Hadrach. Thousands of years of covert operations and manipulating the bloodlines of the powerful is close to fruition. The Sisterhood allowed the union between Hasimir and Margot for the influence it would give them in Shaddam's imperial court. Margot used her position within House Carino to persuade Shaddam to marry a Bene Gesserit sister of hidden rank. This union would be instrumental for the Sisterhood's plans, as she was instructed to bear only daughters to the Emperor. Above all else, the Sisterhood's priority is to preserve the bloodlines that will one day lead to the Kwisatz Haderach. 
However, their machinations are also to ensure that they are in a position to have direct control over this super being. If everything were to have gone as planned, an Atreides' daughter would be wed to Fade Ratha, the Harkonnen heir. Their union would bring the intended Kwisatz Haderach, who would then marry one of the daughters of Shaddam and become emperor. Plans within plans within plans. Every decision of the Bene Gesserit serves their ultimate plan for the universe. The bloodlines they've carefully manipulated must be preserved if they are to succeed, even when unforeseen developments arise. In the past, anomalies have occurred. The Count himself is one such anomaly. One of the most intriguing characteristics of the Count is that he is actually a product of the Bene Gesserit breeding program. He is one of the might have beens a failed Kwisatz Haderach as he was born a genetic eunuch. This background, along with the training of the Bene Gesserit abilities of observation his wife imparted to him, and his close relationship with her, gives him a unique perspective towards the sisterhood and their plans for humanity. He is intimately aware of the work, effort, and sacrifice that has gone into this endeavor, and appreciates what it means for the sisterhood, what it means to his wife for it to come to fruition. Despite a relationship based on devotion to others and their causes, the two seem to have genuine affection for each other, as Lady Margot assists the Count on his missions for the Emperor, and he in turn supports the work his wife does for the Sisterhood. Physically, the Count is also described as a small man with overly large, dark eyes and gray hair at the temples. He's also noted for having difficult to follow movements and speech. However, his unusual speech pattern is actually a humming code he and his wife use to secretly communicate with each other. This enigmatic couple have a relatively small role in the story of Dune, yet they do serve to expand upon the schemes of the Emperor and the Bene Gesserit. However, whether these characters will be featured in Denis Villeneuve's two-part adaptation has yet to be confirmed. In David Lynch's 1984 film, the characters of the Count and Lady Fenring were omitted altogether. In the Sci-Fi Channel miniseries in the year 2000, Count Fenring was played by Miroslav Taborski, though his role wasn't fully fleshed out and some of his wife's actions were given to Princess Irulan. It seems unlikely that we'll see the Count in the first film of Villeneuve's adaptation, since there have been no casting announcements for the Emperor, the Count, or Phaedratha. The Fenring's first appearance in the novel is when they visit the Harkonnen homeworld of Giddy Prime for an event celebrating Phaedratha's official status as the Baron's heir-designate, as well as to attend what would be Fade's 100th gladiatorial victory. Considering there has been no casting for Fade, it seems likely that the plan is to introduce him in the beginning of the second film of this two-part adaptation, shifting this scene on Getty Prime that appeared in the first two sections of the book to coincide with the third in order to give a proper introduction to this fierce antagonist and a strong opening for the second film. If that is indeed how Volnov plans to introduce the Baron's nephew, then it is also a possibility that we'll see Fenring in this sequence as well. Count Fenring's arrival on Getty Prime could also serve to reacquaint the audience with the current political situation resulting from the Harkonnen attack on the Atreides and their retaking of the planet Arrakis. And as the Emperor's agent, Fenring was also there to gather information from the Baron on his behalf. In a tense interchange, it's also revealed just how fragile their alliance is. In regards to who I personally would like to see cast, I have a couple preferences for this role. First would be the original Kwisatz Haderach, Kyle MacLachlan. Not only would this be a perfect callback to Lynch's Dune, but the actor seems particularly suited for this sort of role. As Villeneuve has stated before, Lynch's film does have very strong qualities, and I think Kyle's performance was definitely one of them. This would be an awesome way to pay homage to the original film that introduced so many to this epic story. Another dream casting of mine would be Jeff Goldblum, as he certainly could pull off the unusual speech pattern and weaselly mannerisms for the role. Personally, I think he seems a little more suited for playing the killer with the manners of a rabbit. But let me know in the comments if you think Count Fenring will be included in this newest adaptation, and who you would like to see cast for the role. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy content. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.